Hello everyone, um, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to show you a couple of things I've completed. So firstly, I completed all my decoders. So this can now be used as a 4 to 16 decoder. Um, so the ones on this side, you'll see like the top one is the other way around. That's because the ones on this side, they're going to be the actual 16 line outputs. So those are all going to go out. But this one is the control one. So this has two of the bits of the four bit number come into here and then one of these, these signals go out to the, each, each of these. So it controls where the output is coming from because we only want one line to be true out of all these 16. And yeah, so that's that completed. I just need to wire it up. Um, I didn't change the pins on here. So these are still these straight pins. And obviously you can't uh, put a DuPont cable straight in there because it's hidden. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build up some little wires like this. So I've got these, uh, oh, what are they called? These, <laughs> I forget what they're called now. But yeah, basically a whole bag of them. Um, and they all just fell out. Okie dokie. Okay, anyway, so I could just put normal wire in there. I'm going to solder it in on one side. So when you... So then it can go in sideways on these, like so, and that'll be that'll be easier to fit because I don't need to change any of the pins. Uh, go away. Okay, so I'm gonna yeah make a few of those and wire them up here. I haven't done it yet because I wasn't sure uh, the lengths because yeah they're all going to be different lengths. It's kind of annoying. Um. Secondly, in addition to the diode matrix, um, last time I just showed it working a normal LED display, um, seven segment, I've actually built a seven segment display now. And yeah, it's by itself. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, you can see I still haven't cut these pins here. It's because I, <laughs> I had a lot of trouble making this for some reason. So I'd fit these. And like the first time I had an issue was there was a short between the ground and uh, the power going into the LED there. So it wasn't actually lighting up. Um, so I, I, yeah, I cut all the lines, tested it with a multimeter and it was fine. Soldered it all back up. It worked. There was no short after that. So I, I couldn't see it. I didn't know where it was, but after I cut it and resoldered it, it was fine. Um, but then this, this one broke and I couldn't work that out. There was no short. Um, I couldn't, even if I completely disconnected them, I couldn't power them like directly. It just wasn't lighted, all three of them. So it was something to do with the connection somewhere, but even individually, I couldn't light them. So I don't know what happened there. But if they somehow got burnt out, but if they get burnt out, you can usually tell. Uh, so I don't know, but no, actually it was this side, yeah. So I just took all them out, replaced them all, and it works now. Um, so yeah, you can see I've just made it so you can directly plug it into the board. There is another pin here for ground, because I didn't actually include ground on here. This is just the... Uh, the eight pins to power the seven segments and a decimal point. But it plugs directly into my diode matrix and it will just work from there. So I'll just show you this working. Let me move that and get this. Uh, this is still set up to deal with my other thing. Let me, yes, yeah, so let me just take all these out. It's so much easier to just deal with. I've taken them all out. So you want ground going in here. Also, this um, this LED display works with and without power, but it works better with power. So here's an extra power block. Um, it obviously doesn't need ground. Yeah, it doesn't need ground. It just needs power. So yeah, there is literally no ground isn't connected on there. Uh, yeah, it's just because the, um, the the transistors just go straight out to the LED matrix. So on this one. I put it in there. I usually prefer putting it in there because it's a little easier. Right, let's uh, just plug, put this in so I can test each thing. Test it works. Yep, it works. So I'll angle this up towards the camera and I'll just go through each one. So it should be zero, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then it goes into letters because it's hex A, B, C, D, E, and F. 
So yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, obviously, that's only one, so that only represents a 4-bit number. But if I have two of them bus side by side, that will be a single 8-bit number. So that will be handy. Obviously, um, I'll only need one of these, but I'll need to make something new to have two of these on it. And then I'll have to have some sort of uh, encoder or decoder to um, choose which one to display. So you can only display one at once using this. So first you pass in one half of the number, get the data, put it out on here. Then you'll have to output the, you know, put in the other half of the number, the other four bits, get that and put this on the other display. So you'll need to keep switching them like that. Um, that's, that's not really on the cards at the moment. I am going to do it in the future, but... At the moment, I want to focus on actually, well, from now, I want to focus on actually putting in the actual computer parts. Okay, so I'm just going to put this out of the way. And so that all works. Um, yeah, like I said, I need to wire up that thing, so that'll be another video. Um, I have started working on the ALU. So this is literally just one full adder. Um, I haven't actually tested it yet. <laughs> I tested one of the gates. Uh, this is the front. Well, this is where the input comes in. So I tested one of them, and it worked, and I've just duplicated that. But I need to wire this up. So this is nine NAND gates, and uh, that's enough to make a, a full, one full adder. And I've tested, I tested this before in one of my other videos. I've done it on a breadboard. Uh, same setup, obviously in a much smaller space. Uh, so yeah, these are all the inputs. Just need to wire them up. I'll probably use... Uh, this kind of wire to do that. Different colour because I'm using a lot uh, using a lot of yellow. But yeah, that's it's the most compact I could get it. And obviously this is just a test. So I have bought some larger boards to see if I can fit eight of these directly on one board. Um but I have to wait for them to come. They might come they, blah, they might not come till December, so I'm a bit meh, I might just I'll have a look. I mean, once I've tested this, I'll I'll be more confident in if I want to buy bigger boards for it. Or I could just leave them, I could just make eight of these, stack them, and do the same thing. And my idea here, actually, was to have the inputs on here and have the outputs on the last row. It, only, it wasn't until halfway that I realised, oh, actually, I'm going to miss a row, aren't I? So the idea was to have pins there, pins there, and just stack these directly. And the you can, you can just reverse them like that, so you'd have... Ground and VCC on one pin on two pins, they'll be mirrored over here. So when you flip flip it, it still has it. And yeah, you have A and B inputs and carry in. So you'd only have two of those go into the next board, and one of them will go out. The sum would go out. Uh, yeah, but we'll see what happens. I think I have enough of these. I think I have enough of these fin boards for now. If I don't, I can always order, order some more, it's fine. Um, another thing I started working on, it's not. It's nothing really, I just do it. Uh, I haven't even wired this up properly. It's just It's just gonna, meant to be like a test board. So when I have the adders, I can just do it on here, quick test board. And yeah, so I just tie all them to power. And when I want to actually put it into a computer, I can just apply that and just have all these on and it will just pass through whatever signal you're sending into these. So that should be handy, I think, just for just for testing or yeah, just for testing basically. I thought it'd be useful to have just turn all those down. Otherwise, you know, it's my OCD doing that. Um yeah. So I've got a couple of packages here. I'm not actually sure. I've got <laughs> I've ordered a few packages, and I'm not actually sure what some of these are. So I'm going to open the top one, and depending on what it is, because this one's quite light, depending on what it is, I might open a different one. But I'll open two, and that'll save me some more for the next video. So what on earth are these? Okay, they're my power jacks. They're really small. Are they? Okay. These are a lot smaller than I was expecting. I don't know if they're going to fit. I don't think I ordered the wrong ones. These don't look like the ones that was in the picture, but they look too small. They are way too small. I thought these were, you know, your usual power jacks. Last time I ordered 
one of these, it was the correct one. So those are too small, that's fun. I'll see if I can find some use for these. But, yeah, they're a lot smaller than I was expecting. I mean, I guess I wasn't really paying attention to the uh, the page, but... Last time I ordered a, a barrel jack, I didn't have any issues with it. So I'll have to look into the, what happened there. Probably my fault, don't worry about it. Uh, what else have we got? I, okay, I know what's in here. Um, and it's not really interesting. What's in here? This is a big heavy one. Oh, scissors. Gonna be a complicated one. Right, what have we got here? Ah, oh, okay, that's what that was. It was really heavy, so I wondered what it was. So I bought some new um, soldering iron tips. And these are just pure copper ones. So, you know, these aren't actually meant to last as long as the other ones. Because what these other ones... Oh, sorry. Yeah. What these other ones are is they're iron, but they have copper there to stick the uh, solder to. And that... I think that needs a proper good tin in. I did tin it, but it's not very good. Um, so yeah, I got these ones. And these are these are nice, thin, pointy ones as well. The one I'm using at the moment is quite rounded, and it's quite difficult to get into some tight spots. Um, let me get into this bag. These are very light as well, actually. But yeah. Uh, that is very pointy. That is pointier than the one that broke. But yeah, these are basically to replace the one that broke, which was a nice pointy one. So yeah, where was the thing there? Yeah, a bit, bit disappointed about those, but I don't actually need these yet. These are for, I was buying some spare ones of these for my power supply when I built it. Uh, but I actually wanted a big barrel jack, which I do have one of, but I have one of. So yeah, I just wanted some multiples and these are the wrong ones. But we'll see. Um, oh, actually, seeing as I got those for the power supply, I will open this one as well, because I know what this is. Yeah. Oh, wow, those are chunky. Those are chunky monkeys. So these are 100 ohm resistors, and they're 1 watt ones. So I was I was just looking at uh, power supply schematics, and they're all pretty much what I was expecting. They're um, like the Zener diode uh, thing, but they have... Higher watt rating resistors on um, between the power and the Zener diode. So I've got some. And those are nice and chunky. Uh, have I got any? Well, I haven't got any to compare it to, but yeah, compared to these ones, these are quarter watt uh, resistors. So that's like three times bigger. It's massive. Three to four times bigger. But yeah. So what those are meant to be, and these will go into the power supply. And I might have other uses for these, I don't know. But I've got loads of them. Um, thank you for watching. Um, in my next video, I'll be wiring up, well, I'll, I'll have wired up the uh, 4 to 16 decoder. And we can test that with the LED 7-segment um, display. That would be cool. So, yeah, look forward to seeing you then. See you later.